Give it unto the Almighty God, Mr. Lord Spade. I thank God for who he is. I thank God for all he has done. And I thank God for just being God all by himself. And I I want to talk today about loneliness. Uh, we know that sometimes we have to get in our quiet room. And, and I see a lot of posts on Facebook about, oh, I'm bored. Uh, I don't have nothing to do. And I'm lonely. And I wanted to talk about if you think you're lonely now. Wait until the day of judgment. And I want to talk from Psalms 69, the 7th through the 11th verse, when the psalmist David talked about... Now, I don't know if anybody knows, but David suffered from depression. And I want to read verses 7 to 11 for you. And he says, Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my face, and I become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien to my mother's children. Uh, he was an outcast. That's what he's trying to say. For the zeal of mine house has eaten me up, and reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Uh, verse 10. When I weep and chasten my soul with fasting, that I was my reproach. <laughs> verse 11. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them. I want to go and read verse 12. And they sit in the gate speakers against me. And I was a son of the drunkards. You know what? <laughs> That's something else when the drunks <laughs> can sing a song about you. Uh, you got to be in a pretty bad state. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about if you think you're lonely now, just wait until Judgment Day. We know that uh, King David... <laughs> He was a man after God's own heart. King David, he became the greatest king of Israel, but not before he done some things. He was an adulteress. He was a murderer. And not until Nathan the prophet pointed out his sin when he said, Thou art the man that he had sinned with Bathsheba, had his mistress husband killed on the front line uriah uh, david when he was turned around he wanted to build a temple for the almighty god but the lord told him he couldn't do it because he had blood on his hand uh, he said you're a man of war but uh i'm gonna tell you something we talk about all kinds of things and, and i i truly believe there's nothing new under the sun See, I truly believe that mental illness has been going on from the beginning of time. People just didn't have a name for it. Uh, I'm going to say that I remember uh, the man in the tombs uh, that would cut himself. Uh, I work in mental health. I've, I've had cutters. Uh, they said that uh, they cut themselves to get their mind off their problems. They said that uh, the cutting feels good. Uh, it's just a man cut himself, and uh, he was not able to live in society, but he, he lived among the tombs. Uh, and uh, David talked about how he was a enemy until the ones he thought that would be by his side. He said he wept in his pillow, and uh he said his tears uh, soaked his pillow. And, and I don't know about you, but that uh, sounds like depression to me. Uh, see, let me tell you something. That mental illness is not anything new. But it's all taboo because we don't talk about that in the churches. We don't talk about those people who are different from us. You know, uh, it's sad to say that uh, we expect... Uh, certain kind of people to come up in the church. But you know what? Let me tell you something. Jesus died for everyone. He died for the less, the lost, and the least. And uh, and I'm just trying to show that, you know, there's nothing new. And God has been faithful. But I want to talk about, if you think you're lonely now, uh, and wait until judgment. Uh, uh, the songwriter Bobby Womack, was talking about a romance, and he talked about uh, if the lady that he was dating, if, uh, if she thought she 
had some sleepless nights and uh, laid in her bed uh, by herself, he let her know that if you think you're lonely night uh, now, wait until tonight. Uh, he said, because what he was saying was that I'm not going to be there. Uh, I know some folks have uh, said that uh, uh, what we getting into, uh, I look at s the social media posts, what we getting into because I'm, 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 I'm lonely. Uh, uh, I'm bored and uh, everything else. But let me tell you something. Uh, if you think you're lonely now, uh, I want you to continue to live your life uh, without Jesus. Uh, if you continue to live your life without Jesus, then you'll truly know what it means to be lonely because there's going to be a dark place uh, that you go to where they said that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, there will be no one to hand you a glass of water when you're in that burning hell. Uh, so if you think you're lonely now, uh, just wait until the judgment. Uh, Hebrews 9, 27 say, it is appointed once for man to die and then that, after that, the judgment. I'm trying to tell you folks, uh, you ain't seen lonely until you try to live your life uh, without God. It's one thing to live in this whole world without the almighty God. But uh, if you die without him in your life, and what I'm saying is that being your personal savior, oh, you haven't experienced loneliness yet. But if you think you're lonely now, uh, wait until judgment. Uh, wait until you look around and there ain't no one else there. Oh, the people that you see will be in the lakes of fire. But you know what? Guess what? Oh, they can't comfort you. Because they're too busy in their own torment. Uh, and we're reminded in Matthew, the 16th chapter, uh, when Lazarus and the rich man died, he said he, he looked over and uh, he, first of all, the rich man, he fared sumptuously, which means he had everything that he could desire. He had filet mignon and, and don perignon, and uh, he had the finest wines and probably had all kinds of uh, uh help uh, maids and, and butlers at his feet could bring him anything, never had it to want for nothing. And then Lazarus was a beggar that laid at the gate. Uh, he laid at the gate uh, begging for crumbs. And, and the Bible even says that the dogs came and licked his sores. Uh, but let me tell you something where equality kicks in. It says that uh, one day, both of them died. I'm here to tell you, what does that tell us? That I don't care how much money you have, how popular you are in this whole world. You got to go the same way that somebody that don't have eye water to cry with. We're going to leave this place that we all have to die. It says when the rich man died... <laughs> It says when he woke up, he lifted his eyes up in hell. But it says Lazarus, when he died, he opened his eyes and he found himself in Abraham's bosom. He was in a sacred place, a safe place. The one that had nothing in this whole world. But he had everything in his death. See, let me tell you one thing. It's one thing to live well, but it's another thing to die well. But it says that uh, he lifted his hands and he lifted his eyes and he was in Abraham's bosom. Uh, and the rich man told him, said, well, you know what? He said, I got five brothers back there on the earth. Uh, let me, let send someone to, to go tell them that they don't want to come to this place of torment. Uh, uh, and, but no, 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 not to happen because he said if you had Abraham and you had Moses and the prophets, uh, uh, if you didn't listen to them, you won't listen to Jesus who came from the dead. So I'm trying to tell you, but Abraham, his <laughs> bosom provided comfort for Lazarus. He was comforted 
where he served all kind of afflictions and rejection in this old world. But when he died, he was comforted. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of things in this world worse than dying. But you got to die in the right state of mind. Because I'm trying to tell you, if you think you're lonely now, wait until the judgment. I know that we've heard people say, well, oh, she is going to die an old maid. Not if she's a sister or a daughter of the king. There ain't nothing wrong with being alone. Because let me tell you something, if you're a child of the Most High God, you're never lonely. And you know what? Man defies what is successful, what's prosperous. But what man describes as successful and prosperous is not what God described. Because it says in his word that man look at the outer appearance. But God looks at the heart. We know that from when David was going to be anointed king. Jesse's sons came. And after Samuel had seen all seven of them, he said, is there not another son? What he was saying is that, oh, no, something ain't right. Because all the ones that you brought to me, he ain't the one. So do you have another one? And he said, yeah, I have David. Uh He's a rudy, little shepherd boy. He the baby. And he tend the sheep. Samuel told him, go out there and get him. Because we ain't finna eat no grub. I'm just going to make it plain. Until he gets to this table. And we know that David was anointed to be the king. Even though he was only a young boy. It was several years before he became king. But I'm telling you, he was the greatest king that Israel ever had. The, gate, the greatest king in Israel's time. So let me tell you something. When the Lord said, if you are burdened and heavy laden, he will come to you and give you rest. But you got to understand something. If you think you're lonely now, wait until the judgment. If you think you're lonely now, I wouldn't wait until it's too late. Because the Bible says you ought to seek the Lord while he is to be found. Work while it is day. Because night comes when no man can work. You can't see how to work in the dark when it's darkness out there. You got to work in the daytime hour. Let me tell you something as well. People are too busy sleeping during working hours. Oh, if you fall asleep on a job in these days, they'll give you your pink slip. But it's too many Christians today are asleep when they ought to be working. Working to bring people to Christ. But I'm trying to tell you, if you think you're lonely... When you wake up and be like, hey, who getting in something? Because I'm bored. You ain't seen loneliness until you die without Christ as your personal Savior. But God is a good God. He's worthy to be praised. And he want his people to seek his face. Seek the Lord while he is to be found. Because there's going to be a time when you look for him. But when you come to the Lord, you got to come right. Because you do not want to hear these words. Depart from me, thy worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You want to say, well done? You want him to hear him say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few things. Come on up. Let me make you rule over many. It is time 
to be about our father's business, brothers and sisters. It's time. If you don't want to hear it, it's time to sow a seed so the ones that do want to learn of the gospel will have the opportunity. God want to rule in your life and he wants to go govern your life. But we're so selective what we choose to let the Lord take control of. You can take control of my life because I want all your blessings. Take control of my body because I want all my health. But when it comes to your pocketbook, oh no, I don't need your help. I got a few things I need to do. We don't want God in our finances. And what you're saying is when you don't want God in your finances is that you don't trust him to give back what you sowed. You set your seed to be blessed. But God is a good God. And you ain't never experienced loneliness. And my heart go out to the ones, my niece lost her loved one, her helpmate, her significant other. And it's a sad thing that you bury the one you love. But the best thing about that is God is standing ready to take over and be in that place of the one you lost. I'm here to tell you, God has a way. Anything that's a void in your life, you need to let God come in and fill that void. That's the problem. We're selective in what we want the Lord to take hold of. But give him everything because we have to understand, brothers and sisters, He's God of all, or he's not God at all. He said that he is a jealous God, a consuming fire. He will not share his glory with anyone. But I'm trying to tell you, if you think you're lonely now, continue to live your life without the true and living God, having a relationship. I'm not saying going to church, putting ties in it. Getting caught up in emotions. Hooping and hollering all over the sanctuary. Because you can do all of that and still bust hell wide open. I'm trying to tell you. Because a lot of time when people are hooping and hollering, it's from guilt. But if you truly trust Christ as your personal Savior... You will never be alone because he said in this word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Call on me. Make your petitions known to the Lord and he will take care of you. The Bible says, cast your care, cast your care upon the Lord because he cares for you. And if he don't want to take care of you, if that's not him willing to take care of you, I don't know what it is, but I'm just trying to tell you. You don't have to be alone. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding and in all ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. It's time for us to start letting the Lord be our GPS. We put faith in our computers and our cars to take us where we need to go. But yet we don't put faith in Christ. Because let me tell you something. If Christ leads you, you'll never be lost. If Christ leads you, you'll never go to places you shouldn't be in the first place. But he's looking for that faithful few. He's prepared a place. And the place was prepared for prepared people. Don't ever fool yourself. 
any pastor that tell you that you can get in heaven, live in any kind of way, what I tell you I would do, I would pick up my belongings and not leave that church and I will never come back. Because I'm going to tell you something. If he's teaching that and preaching that, he's preaching you straight in to the gates of hell. God's word said it. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. He said he's coming back. He said in these end times, the very elect will be deceived. The elect is the ones that he called. But he said that those that trust in him, accept him as his personal savior, shall be saved. That's in Acts, the second chapter. Too many people are on the broad road, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, and they need to get on the narrow road. But the reason they don't want to get on the narrow road is because it ain't enough room for all that baggage. You got to get rid of some things, some people, some places, and some things. That's what God wants you to do. But I just want to talk for a few minutes from Psalms. If you think you're lonely now, just wait until the judgment. But God has a way. And there's a great coronation in the sky. And it's waiting for us. Well, we meet the Lord in the air. And we can worship him in spirit and in truth. We'll be like the 24 elders who cast their crowns at the Lord's feet. I just want you to know, God's got a way. It's all, the, the plan is already prepared. God just wants you to follow. May the peace of Jesus be with each and every one of you. Minister Laura Spate, Twin Ministries. Remember, support the fundraiser so that I'll be able to go out, do conferences on things that they just don't talk about at church, things you just don't hear about. Bullying. Being able to witness to your unsaved loved ones. Being able to witness to the ones who live an alternative lifestyle. Mental health issues. We don't want them people in our church. But God died for them as well. These are some of the topics that I want to discuss in these upcoming conferences. But I need your help. Please go to the fundraiser page, support, donate, get your customized t-shirt, memorabilia, memorial. God bless. And I thank you. And today is a day of remembrance. 19 years ago today, I lost my mom. And my life has never been the same. But glory be to God in 2000. She was there when I preached my trial sermon. And I thank her, being a single mother of five, that she raised some strong children. And I thank her for that. I reflect on her memory. And I thank her for instilling values in me. But God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. So I ask you, if you think you're lonely now, wait until the judgment. Let's get our house in order. Pray we get our business straight so that we can all meet at the gate. Minister Laura Spate, may God bless each and every one of you. And may the peace of Jesus be with you. Thank you.